Hello and welcome to another video. This time I thought I'd show you the ideas and the technique that I'd used to transform this image into something far more dramatic. We're going to make a start by replacing the sky. So coming over to the creative tab, we're going to come up to AI sky replacement. Sky selection. I said something dramatic and ideally I'd love to have taken this picture of our Spanish windmill as the sun was setting, but sadly that wasn't possible. But it is now. I said dramatic, I said sunset. Number four is going to be the ideal one, just waiting for it to arrive and there it is. Got the highlight on our windmill, we got the sun in this position here, so the two match up perfectly. Let's have a good look around. Gonna press down, that's gonna zoom into 100%. We've got a bit of a broken rope there, but yeah, apart from that, it has done a superb job. Absolutely fantastic. No wonder they call it AI sky replacement. And oh, just notice the horizon is out. We've got some gray areas here. So let's just take a look. The horizon position. If I move this to the right hand side, gonna take it down very slightly, otherwise the sun will set before we've even started. Minus four, that looks pretty good. Coming down to Sky Global, moving this across, those greys should start to, there they are. They are now disappearing, taking it right up into this region here. They've all gone. And look at the fantastic job that sky has done. We got every twig, we got every branch of our tree showing with the sunset behind. Absolutely amazing. Right, our broken rope. I'm gonna click on the advanced. We're gonna come down to close gaps to the right hand side and as I'm moving it over you'll notice the rope is growing up from the bottom coming and it's now going to join up. Job done. Amazing or what? Looking around the rest of the picture let's zoom back out. Something else I always do whenever I replace the sky is relight scene. I'm gonna move this across to the right just seeing how that looks and as I'm taking it out noticing it's darkening down nicely here and here. If you take it to a position Double click, double click in any slider resets it to its default. Click down again, taking it back up. That looks much better in this position here. I like what it's done darkening down, slightly improve the tones as well in the foreground. Looking around the rest of the picture, I think I need to just add a little bit more warmth to that sky. So we're gonna take this across for our sky temperature. Coming down to sky exposure, going to drop this down a touch or two just to darken it down. Looking around the image, I saw some sun rays here when we were zooming in, removing the grey area and our horizon. So how about a few more sun rays? We're now going to bring the amount right the way up so we can see exactly what's going to happen. Place sun centre. Clicking on the button, we can now move this around. And as I'm starting to bring it down, look, we can even place it behind clouds coming to our windmill, going back and forth behind. We've now got ourselves a lighthouse, even placing it behind the boom there. It does an amazing job. It is just showing from behind. So I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna place it down in this position, just dropping it down behind those clouds. Let's come to the amount. I'm gonna drop the amount down. Come to the sun ray length, taking this down as well into this position. The amount down a little bit further. Penetration. That's the amount of light around the sun area. So let's come up to this. I'm gonna take that down into this position here, just so we can see those clouds. That looks much better. The warmth of our sun rays, let's take this up. And there you can just see some warmth coming through onto that sun ray in particular. That looks really good. If I just switch this off and on, you can see how that adds to the image. Right, the next thing I want to do is uh, come over to the Essentials tab. Now we're going to go to AI Enhance. Now Luminar uses a huge amount of AI technology. You saw what an amazing job it did replacing that sky. And if we come to AI Accent, if I just take this up, look at the way it's improving those tones in this area here. It does an absolutely amazing job just taking it. It's just identifying as well the foreground. It's not doing the sky, but it will do if I come to the sky enhancer and just taking that again, just drop it back and forth into this region here. There, that looks pretty good. Now, one thing I'm not particularly keen on is the blues in the clouds. So I'm going to come to color. While I'm here, remove color cast, taking this across just a little bit 
into this region. Let's come to the advanced settings. Going to click on the blue, so we've now got the blue saturation. Going to take this over to the left hand side just to take those blues out of our sky. Let's just switch this off for one second, switching it back on. I think it's probably made the sky just a little bit too bland. So let's take this up further because I'm now going to come to Edit Mask. I'm going to go to Brush. Now with this, I've got Paint. This is selected. Size of the brush is here. The opacity is 50%. And I'm just going to paint over this region like that. That's where I want to remove the blues from, in particular, like this. I think that looks much better. So let's just take a look. You can see there's my mask. That little white bit is what we painted out. I just switch that off and on. That's removed the blues from that region. Okay, next, I'm going to come back up. We're going to go to AI structure. Moving this over, and as we start to move it over, look at the detail we can pull out of that sky. So I'm going to take it to this sort of region here. It's also getting a lot more detail out of that stonework. Let's take the boost up as well. Take a little bit more with this. We can switch it off and on. Looking pretty good. Right, for the next stage, I'd like to add a vignette. Now, I don't want to do it on this layer. Yes, we are working in layers. So let's come up to the layer tab. There's everything we've done in this neat little package. And you'll notice we've got this highlighted for the essentials. It's highlighted for the creative as well. These are grayed out. So these are the two that we're using there in here. Layer plus symbol. Let's click on this. And we're going to go for a new adjustment layer. Coming down to the essentials, we're going to come down to vignette. I'm going to make sure you've got the advanced showing as well. Let's take the amount down. What I want to do is I want to darken it around this region here. I want to darken it to the bottom as well. So let's take this down further. I'm now going to come to the size. I'm going to take this in as well like that. I'm going to come to the roundness. I'm going to bring the roundness. As I bring the roundness in, let's take the feather down so we can see exactly. I've got a nice line here. You can have elliptical. You can have round but I just like the way it's coming. That squared off look is pretty good. So that should work well with our shadow with the bottom. The position's a little bit out. Choose subject, bringing my cursor out to this region here. And if we click down, just taking it over a little bit further there, that could work a treat. Right, let's bring the feather back. Just make sure you click on the slider. That would really help. Coming to the amount as well, just bringing the amount back into this region and just a little bit more with a feather. If I switch it off and on, you can see the difference that's making. Darkening down this area here, a little bit to the foreground. I think I want to darken the foreground further. So I'm now going to come to the Pro tab. We're now under Professional. We're going to come to Adjustable Gradient and make sure you select the bottom. We're now going to take the exposure right down. Clicking on set orientation has brought up our gradient tool. And what this is doing, this is the darkest point here. This is where we've got minus 67. It's then coming up to this area. It's then feathering out to this region here. So if I click on that little button, we can reposition it. Coming up to the top bar of our gradient tool, I can drop this down here. So we've now got the lights there. And if I just move this back and forth, you can see the difference that's making. Taking it back to the default, double clicking goes to zero. We can start to bring this over until we darken it down into something like this. That looks pretty good. Just switching it off and on. That will do nicely. Coming back over to layers, we've got the adjustment here for our adjustment amount. So we can click, we can blend this in with the image underneath. Now, one final thing I'd like to do with this is just bring through a little bit more of the, the tones, the warmth in our windmill over to our background layer. Let's click on our Pro tab. We're now going to come down to Color Enhancer. This is a hugely powerful tool, but we're going to use one slider, Color Contrast. Now, the hue is set on zero. Zero is, if I just move it across, you can see it is red. Double clicking to reset it. We're just going to use the amount. I'm going to take this over, take into this region here. I just like the way it adds warmth into, you can just see into the windmill, just taking it up a little bit further like this. 
right double clicking to reset it there it is before there it is after now i just want it to be on the windmill i do not want it to be around this area here and if i just switch it off again you can see the way it's just brightening up that sunset so let's come down to the edit mask i'm going to click on brush this time i'm going to click on erase we've got the opacity at 50 percent i'm going to leave it on that and i'm just going to come around here let's go around there once and let's switch on our little eye icon so we can see exactly where we're working let's go around it again so you can see that's the area we're working on and if i just switch this off let's take a look now if i just switch it back and forth so you've got a little bit of warmth there but i want to make sure that the majority of our warmth is on this part of our image that looks pretty good like that coming back over to our layers switching on our vignette and the bottom part and just switching it off and on you can see the difference that's making might want to drop this down very slightly with this to that area and there it is there is our finished image if you come down to the little watch there everything you've done has been recorded in your history so if you wanted to come back you wanted to come back to say where we did the structure you can click on that you can redo it from there it is a fantastic way of working you've even got your original talking of the original if i just come over to this one our split screen our before our after what a fantastic job this does just clicking on that again before and after and there it is i said i wanted to create something far more dramatic really does work a treat so go on give it a try i'm just going to click on the little edit tab to open everything up and there it is i hope you've enjoyed the video give it the thumbs up if you have and don't forget to subscribe as there's plenty more videos to come but until the next time it is happy imaging and take care